ugly or whatever. Okay, here we go. Hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like the clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Involved with SteelFlyers.com, and we have uh, Steel Flyers right here in the presence today. We also have Professor Joe Bork, who is also a part of Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Got them all together today. As you know, we've been doing now the series on each division. The NHL has come out with the new divisions and such. And uh, we are doing, I'm doing a little <coughs> series on as many people as I possibly can, um, predicting sir, each, each division. I did one with Peyton for this actual division we're going to do today, which is East Division. But I want more because I don't know about you guys, but I find it fun to see what the pros think. And these are pros about how, and it, it varies so much. I find that, that's what I find it so much fun, is great hockey minds still think differently and still have different leans and different reasons. And my favorite part about this, of course, is the bragging rights afterwards. That's my ultimate favorite. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not going to actually be telling you because you're going to go over to the other one we did and you're going to see what I thought. Today, these guys are the stars. Steel, thanks for coming in and doing this on on Christmas Eve, actually. Uh, oh, yeah. And taking the time to do this today. Um, all right, so, the, of course, we also must remind everybody that we are all Flyers fans here, right, Steel? Uh, not that you can tell. <laughs> not, not, not that you can tell or, 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 any, or anything, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay look. Um, first of all, man, uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, can't. Can't wait to uh, get into uh, some really great information here about the East. Uh, thanks, Perlo, for having me on, man. It's always a blast, especially being with the pros. Uh, Perlo Wisdom is definitely the man. And Professor Joe sitting in, man, I'll tell you what. I feel blessed and honored and privileged to be sitting here on the same screen with y'all. Uh, I'm glad to have you, my friend. Uh, it's like we're part of the furniture now. Joe, uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for coming as well, my friend. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go, I'm going to start from the bottom and we'll go up to the top and we'll do a quick blurb on the re on your positions from each one, uh, starting at the last position. Who do you, and I'm going to start with Joe here, you start, who's who's the lowest in this division? Get that right out of the way right now. Um. It's going to be a battle between uh, um, Gritty. Uh, the Gritty doll says hi to everyone, by the way. Um, hey, Merry Christmas, it's Gritty. A battle um, of the trenches, I guess, I guess, in the bad way, meaning the downtrodden trenches between, I think, Jersey and Buffalo for that position. Um, and that's just because Buffalo got put into a hard place of our division. Uh, I think in the regular division, they wouldn't have got so knocked down so early in the season that they probably won't get back up. Uh, so that's, but I think it's a battle either between them or if Pittsburgh does actually completely fall flat on their face. Uh, but I would say the team that's more likely down there is probably New Jersey, just because they didn't add much to their team coming in. They're just trying to continue to reach, build and let their young guys continue to kind of develop each year so they don't want to plug anybody in that'll stop gap anybody so i think they're probably going to be the lowest team in my opinion okay uh steel are you do you concur with that wow man i'll tell you what i i have to say yeah i, I agree uh, buffalo was is definitely put in a bad spot um but you you just have to you, you just have to fight through. Did Buffalo do enough this off season? I don't think so. I, I also agree with uh, Professor Joe that I don't think the Devils are going to be able to bring it to the table this year as well. Um, they do have some pieces in place, uh, Hughes and Heshear, and you know they're starting to put some things together. And those are two number one draft picks, and a lot of pressure on those those two young lads and bringing some folks in. And so 
Yeah, and between that and Buffalo, it's going to be a toss-up. I agree. I think it's going to be a toss-up between Buffalo and the Devils being the bottom. And and I'll go with – just because Professor Joe said the Devils, right, I'll say Buffalo. You're gonna, oh, you think Buffalo is going to crop the bed that bad? Wow, that's yeah. really yeah, – Yeah, I, I, I just that's think – That's a hot take. Well, I think because the Devils have a bit more offense – capabilities and a bit more offense potential than than buffalo right now okay and so i think that might get them a couple more wins one thing they do have probably right off the get-go maybe in new jersey uh, joe is talking about and i'm not going to tell you who i picked by the way but i will mention this because you brought it up this is why i like doing this the different leans and gets my mind thinking now all of a sudden i might be changing my mind they do have the goaltending blackwood and crawford and we know how huge goaltending is going to be here. So you might have something there still. I don't know if I necessarily agree with you, but we'll see. Maybe I will after all of this. Uh, I mean, okay. not this year. Not this year, but I think they're going to do better than Buff. But, or better but than... I think most people are putting Jersey last, and you're, 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 you're putting them a little bit above Buffalo. And I, I'm just saying that that could vary because I never thought about that. The goaltending is going to be pretty big this year. So... Uh, okay, number seven then, where you kind of already said. So we'll do it quick because you pretty much already said it. Joe, what do you got for number seven? Uh, Buffalo, uh, they're the other team <laughs> that I think towards the uh, bottom. It's not because I don't like certain players. I, I, honestly, I like certain players that steal rattled off or New Jersey. But Buffalo, Jack Eichel's a, the dude. Uh, the problem is he's, unless if Taylor Hall becomes the dude again, uh, is the only guy on that team that's a go-to guy, unless if Taylor Hall reverts back to his MVP self, then we might be talking about something of this team being a surprise team in the division. But that's a big if, and they're a little bit small at center. They, they're they not very deep there, even if right. with the addition of Stahl down the middle. Yeah, good point. Um, so I think, yeah, they'd be second to last in this division, most likely, unless if Hall returns to MVP for it. And I think you concur, Steele, <laughs> well, obviously. Well, no, no, you, it, you, think no, New Jersey, I, you think New Jersey. Yeah, though. yeah, I think – because I think Buffalo is going to be the lower <laughs> team. I think Devils are going to be a little a little better just because I think of their right. um, more offensive upside uh, and also more uh, alongside of that line. So I think it's going to get them a couple more wins, and I think they're going to finish a little bit ahead of Buffalo. Okay, this one's the one that's interesting. It got interesting in our last video, and you guys are all going to watch it. Well, you already watched it. Who hasn't yeah. watched it, obviously, right? Yeah, Everybody man. here has already watched the video. But uh, if you haven't, maybe you're in a coma or something. Go check, go it check out. that out, man, because I'll hey. tell you what, man. Peyton hey. is the man, and you guys yeah. roll real good. He's great. Number six. This is an interesting spot. Joe, number six. What are we doing here? Um... Number six is going to depend on the young goaltending of two teams, actually, because it's going to depend on who emerges as a superior New York team, because that other team is going to end up being either fifth or sixth, or it'll be the Pens just by process of elimination with the division. All I was saying in that other video was you can't count Pittsburgh out until they're out. I wasn't saying I think they're going to be in the postseason. I was just saying I wouldn't be shocked if they are because they're a team that always has the hockey gods send them the golden gates pretty much all, <laughs> all, all the time. Uh, uh, so, thing, <laughs> so, um, But I would say it's more likely inclined to be just because of their goaltending situation, Pittsburgh, since they have to really have Yare turn into – a very good starter because Casey Day Smith's a good backup. I'm not sure if he's a good one B because people have to remember De Smith was actually supposed to be their backup last year if it wasn't for cap constraints, which then is why Tristan Yare emerged at the beginning yeah. of the season yeah. to now be given the shot to be their starter. So it's interesting how that all played out. But now with him as the backup, you have to see if he can be a one B. So because of that big question mark. I would say they're likely to be six, but they're still a team I'm not counting out until they're out. Okay, Steele. Now, what do you got? He Steele has a tendency to surprise, by the way. <laughs> what do you well, I'll tell you what. With exactly 
with what Joe brought up kind of has me thinking the same thing with putting the pens in the same slot. However, I really think that if the Rangers can put it together a little bit more, maybe I see I'm tossed up here between the Rangers and the pens at this spot. Because if Sisterkin plays well, <clears throat> and we talked about this before, if, it, if he comes to the fore and plays well, then I think they'll finish ahead of the Pens. Look, I agree. I'm never going to count the Pens out, but I'm not. But I'm not necessarily counting them in either. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, if I had to, if I had to roll the bones on this one, I would probably say I'd agree with Joe and put the Pens. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's what I, I'm very, uh, it seems surprising to me that there are so many people not picking the pens this year, simply because of their history, but it's hard not to. They just made some really weird moves and bad moves, right? A new well, coach. I don't want to give, yeah, new coach, or no, well, no, this year they still have the same coach. Is Solomon still, still coaching? Okay, Sullivan, but Sullivan. they fired, they fired all the assistants. Oh, yeah, they assistants. Still yeah. Fired new assistants. they fired all the new, assistants. New you know, assistants. What? Huh? Okay. That means yeah. Sullivan, if they do end where we're predicting, he's probably fired. Probably yeah. gone, yeah. that mm-hmm. means he's on the hot seat. That's his last-ditch effort. They're trying to get him other assistance. Mm-hmm. That's usually your last-ditch effort of until you actually act. Yeah. if it doesn't yeah. work out there. Yeah. Pittsburgh That's... is going to be the one of the most interesting teams to watch what they do this year. It's going to be very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that's number six. That's number six. Now, I mean, this I, hold on. Division. I just want to say one more thing. If Malkin and Crosby stay on the ice, and Sullivan can figure it out a little bit, and their goalie can be okay, and their pick with uh, uh, Kapanen, right? If if they can put that on the table, and they can bring up a young guy for their D and whatever, whatever. Then they'll be probably finished ahead of the Rangers. I just yeah. want to say that that's the thing, though. If 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 Crosby and or Malkin miss significant time, then I think that's why you're going to see them lower, and that's why I'm picking them lower because they have a history of doing so. So, yeah, they have a lot of players that are having injury problems, like Demolin and their defenses, and that. I'm sell. I'm telling. I'm giving people too much information about my picks here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number five. And this division as a whole is very difficult, by the way. It's going to be yeah. probably pretty tight. Any one of these teams could surprise, really. Number five, what do we got, Joe? Uh, the middle of this division got really interesting now with the fact that Henrik Lundqvist is not playing because the Capitals do not have depth at their goal position. So they really have to bank on Sam Sonoff who I think is going to be a good goalie, but being basically the dude already, like a guy that's going to man the net for 90% of the games and the other guy just kind of is there and plays also. And I don't think that's really what they wanted to do this year. That's the whole reason why they got Lundqvist. So there's even a chance that the Capitals could somehow, if they can't find a solution to their goaltending, which I think they would do, somehow figure out how to get to the sixth or fifth spot, excuse me, and piss off their entire fan base. Um, I do think it is more likely whichever one of the two New York teams goaltending platoon does not emerge as the superior will probably fall potentially to the fifth seed. And I think that has a better chance still in my opinion, of being the Rangers just because they still need to prove it yet. Where the Islanders have already proven to be able to get to the postseason and have guys that have been there. The Rangers, Kapokaka was graded as one of the three worst forwards in hockey last year. So I think he can still be a good player, but he needs to show that he's a good player. I believe in guys like Scheidel, Howden a little bit, but they need to show it. Zibanejad needs to continue to show it. Uh, Kreider, which he did, he did last year and during the playoffs. So I mean, and then where's Strom? Is Strom going to be the Ryan Strom of last year? Go back to being the Ryan Strom of his just entire career, which is just a solid overall player. They need him to really be a top six guy 
on their team, like as an overall top forward on the team. So I think uh, they have some question marks. How good uh, does La- does Lafreniere come in as a world beater? Does he come in as just a good player in his first year? So I think there's more ifs with the Rangers, which is why I will put them at the four spot and not a team like the Capitals that have the veteran guys that have been there in the playoffs, like the Wilsons, the Backstroms, the Ovechkins, Carlsons of the world. Um, So I won't put them there or the Islanders. You also have the veteran cats that have been there in the playoffs. That's why I'll give the fifth spot to the Rangers going in. That could definitely change in our midseason video, but we'll see now. (laughs) Okay, Steel, what do you got for number five, everybody? Okay, I'll tell you what. Everything that you said, Joe, was pretty much spot on. I mean, you can't you, – you have to look – see, and I agree with you too 100% because I, I do have the Rangers at the fifth spot, but then I also have the Capitals. Like, I think those two particular teams could switch. And I'm looking at – I'm going to look at both of those teams' first 15 games. Well, every team – I'm going to look at their first 15 games. And I think it's going to tell a lot about what's going on with each team. And we've touched on this on some of our other um, prediction videos and all this other stuff. But teams that have had a lot of turnover, I think, are going to be vastly affected, especially going forward and especially in the first 10 games or 15 games of the season. Okay, and you're looking at a lot of um, even though they're back to backs, not always necessarily the next day. There might be a day in between, but there's no travel between some of these games. But irregardless, I still I have that feeling that the Rangers and or the Capitals could be here. I'm going to go with Joe. I'm going to go with you on this one again, man. I'm going to pick the Rangers to be in the fifth seed in the East. But you know what? They might make it as a wild card. There is or, no wild card this year. Oh, so they're only they're only doing the the top four top teams, and then that's it. That's it. No wild wow. card. Wow. Well, okay then. Yeah, they're outside looking in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we almost seed. Peyton and I almost did that one before we did the last video. We had to go back. Oh yeah, all right. There's no wild card this year. So yeah, yeah right? there's no wild card. Yeah. Okay, so I'm it glad feels, we got that cleared it, up. It feels like there should be, but there isn't. But there's yeah. not. Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, I'm with you on that one, Joe. I'm Rangers on that one. Uh, unless unless Sabanajad steps up, unless Lafreniere steps up, unless their goalie uh, teams step up, yeah, there's, we'll see. Yeah, I agree with you with the Rangers uh, in the sense that it, it's all what your gut says with them because there's a lot of ifs, but they're big ifs. If if yeah. if Ka- if Kako becomes what Kako is supposed to be, if Lafreniere rocks it right out of the gate, if you know they got so many guys that can just bah, make that whole team change and like that, like that is a really tough tough team to put in a spot. But and now this is I feel a, like they're this, about a year away. Like next I'm, year's when they're. I'm gonna- finding I'm finding that everybody that I do this one, this is the one here. This is the spot where it's like all over the place. So, number four, Joe, what do we got? Uh, number four changed um, for me. I did have it thinking coming in before the Hank thing, as the Isles would probably become the uh, four and the. Um, Rangers would, or not the Rangers, excuse me. Um, and then a team like the Capitals would fall into the third spot. Now I think because of the goaltending, the Capitals, until they finish fixing their goaltending, which I think they might do, will be in the fourth spot. And even without that, they still have a chance to be in the fourth spot because you got the Islanders, the Bruins, and the Flyers, who are all very competitive teams that now have a better goaltending tandem than you rocking into the season so I think that's why I have the Capitals uh coming in in the four spot because they unfortunately lost a guy that said as he said he was working his tail off to get in and then he had a heart condition it's so unfortunate we wish Lunk was well but the Capitals need uh Sam Shonoff to step up and their defense is good with Carlson and Orloff leading it, but it's not amazing. Then you got Justin Schultz. I like uh, Brendan Dillon, but then 
But below that, you got like the Jensen's and Trevor Van Riemsdyk's of the world. So they need a guy like Siegenthal or to step up potentially in their defense and mean more to their team this year. Um, so there's some ifs on that team that I think outweigh now the Islanders' ifs. Though that's why I put them at four because their goaltending is a biggest if that now definitely outweighs the Islanders scale for me. So, okay. So you uh, have, st- so I'm sorry. So you have, you have the capitals at four. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I, I don't, I think that, I think that Boston is going to be the fourth seed. And I think, the reason why I'm saying that is because there's question marks with Chara and Marshawn is not going to be starting and, and Padreso is not going to be starting. And I think that's going to be a major blow to them going into the season until they can come back. So I think they're going to be able to kind of figure things out and do some patchwork and get things rolling. They're going to be still a strong team, but I just, I, I really like what the Capitals have done in this offseason, even though they've lost Lundquist. They brought Laviolette in, and I think bringing him in is going to right that ship for the Capitals because they almost won the whole the whole shoot match last year. And they had a pretty difficult coach, I would say, to, to say the least. Okay, so that's why I would put Boston. I think Boston's going to drop a peg uh, this year based off of last year and everything, just off of because of the questions that I have uh, with them going forward into this season. Uh, and I think that the Capitals have answered those questions. They made the coaching change. They brought Laviolette in. Even though they did lose Lundquist, I think they were able to maintain. Uh, but I just think Boston is going to be in that four spot. Cool. I, I knew you were going to bring Lavi up there. Uh, that was a big thing, too. That change of yeah, – that's going to be very interesting to see what Lavi does with that team. It feels like it's a perfect match. So, yeah, um, I think that's, that's part of what keeps them in the four spot, though, because with the goaltending situation they have now, I would argue the Rangers have a better situation coming in. Oh but yeah, I, the I would give the Capitals the benefit of the doubt of an experienced coach that's driven his team deeper into the playoffs more times than Quinn has. So yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah, but also, I also think though, but I also think too though that those injuries to Boston are going to be are going to be some issues. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to hurt them, especially in the beginning of the year when, look, we're only playing fifty six games, so um, it's like every game almost counts as like a game in three quarters now. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. So it's almost like a three point night every time they step on the ice. Yeah. So the games have a little bit more meaning now. So that's why I think it's going to be um, Boston in that four spot. It's going to be tough. Okay. Yeah. Joe, three spot. Uh, three is between the team that Steele put forth uh, or the Islanders. Um, and the Islanders obviously have the questions of, will Bavillier continue to perform like this study started to become uh, at parts of last season? Um, other than that, at center, they're definitely a deep team with uh, Nelson and Gabriel Palje uh, as their third guy now, moving Sezikis all the way down to their fourth line, which is still a good one with Cutterbuck on that fourth line. Um, I think because of injuries, that's the only thing that's making me, because I think these top three seeds in our division are going to be honestly at four within like three, four points, probably potentially of each other by season's end with how competitive this will be. And I think the first couple games of not having these guys, I'm with Steele on the injuries effect in Boston. I just don't think to the umph degree of being the last playoff spot, I would put it at the second to last um, playoff spot in the division where I think, that will move them down to four, or excuse me, three. And then, obviously, the other team I gave away would then be my Islanders prediction that I'll leave for next to highlight how good I like certain players on their team. But the reason I think Boston's three above the Capitals 
for me personally is how good Halak was able to step up and perform that tandem they got there. They've won the awards uh, for goalie tan like I forget what it's called, but the award for the um, duo of goalie uh, performing for the year um, more than once. Uh, so I just think uh, Tuke's going to perform again and Halak's going to perform. That's what uh, makes me put them at third, and then that's what makes me put the Capitals at four because of the question mark now. Okay. Steel. I'm the opposite. Trip. I'm the opposite. I have Boston at four, Capitals at three. Okay. I, I think Capitals are going to – they may not necessarily be – a record of improvement. Like, I don't think they're going to be improved as far as their record is concerned, which is why I have them at the third spot. Okay. But I think they're going to be a better team this year than what they were last year. And I think they're going to go further or deeper in the playoffs this year than what they did last year. Okay. Be because of La Violette coming in and because of, what they've been able to do as far as maintaining most of the core of the team is still there. Okay. And they haven't had a lot of turnover. And, and I think with given the fact that they're going to be able to, I, I just, I have the capitals at number three for that very reason. I just think that they're going to be a better team that they were last year, but not quite as far as their record, you know what I mean? So that's why I put them at number three instead of Boston. Okay. Joe, Number two. Two, yeah, two I gave away with my last one, but that oh, was that, before you go, it's called the Jennings trophy. Number two. Okay. The Jennings. Oh, there yeah, you that's, go. Yeah. That's what they won. Yeah. The, the, the goalie uh, duo Kuba tandem. Yeah. And, uh, Yaro Halak. Yeah, the Jennings trophy for the nice. goalie yeah. duo. Nice. Um but I have the uh, Islanders. I think their defense is even going to get better this year now with Noah Dobson uh, coming in and actually going to come into a full season this year, which is going to be uh, fun for their fan base to be able to watch. Uh, of course, you've got Mayfield, who they turned into a pretty solid defenseman. They have Nick Letty on their team, Pellich and Pulak. Um, try to say that to that defensive line three times. Yeah, right. Pelich, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, I just think they're a deep team down the middle, and I really like uh, the chances of teams when they at least have three deep down the middle to be able to defend and man because Pajo and Nelson are good on both sides. Barzal is getting better each year in his own zone um, and is obviously a menace in the offensive zone. So I think uh, the Islanders are going to be the second-place team for me. Uh, right there competing for first place because, like I said, this is going to be one of the closest, if not the closest, at the top four division in the league, I think. So. All right, Steele. I okay. pro probably can guess this, but... Uh, I'm going Flyers. Wow. wow. Okay. The reason why I'm going to go Flyers is I believe that the Islanders are where the Flyers need to be i think that the islanders i feel personally that the islanders are that one year ahead of where philadelphia can be i also have some questions with philadelphia coming into the season that are kind of that cloud hanging over your head i think that the islanders are going to be exactly with why Joe said, I think the Islanders are going to be a, 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 a really good team this year. They showed that they have pert near all the tools to march down the Eastern Conference and put teams on their butts. Okay. And, the, and they lost to Tampa Bay because I think Tampa Bay out physicaled them. And Tampa Bay just had too much offense against them and that was just a little bit too much for them plus i think they were beat down by the flyers i think that was a tough series for them so i think that's why they lost against tampa bay okay i'm okay. gonna stick with you and tell me why and you just told you guys so you got the islanders number one then you just told me why so we'll yeah. just stick with that the islanders yeah. number one very interesting probably 
Um, go check out mine, by the way. It's pretty interesting with Peyton there. It's pretty interesting. But that's a very interesting pick because I always underrate the Islanders. I will tell you this. I didn't have Islanders number one. But that wouldn't surprise me at all because I always underrate Trotz. Trotz is my favorite coach well, of all time. Uh, and I yeah. Him all the time. Yeah. But see, look, <laughs> here's the thing, though. This is why I'm putting the Flyers at number two. We have heard that uh, Chuck Fletcher has come out and said that if he if Nolan Patrick is cleared, he's in. Yeah. So that's question mark number one. Yeah. Question mark number two: Can Myers and Provy and the rest of that D gel and be the team that they they were last year? Okay. Can Can Gustafson be an addition to the team? Can we put more goals in the net. Okay. If we can do that, I think we're going to be a much better team. But I think the Islanders are just that peg above where because they wore us down in the fly, in the playoffs, and they just beat us to the puck. They everything that we tried to do, they were able to do better. Right. Okay. So Joe, th- within twenty seconds, let me know why Philadelphia is number one in your books. They, I think they're number one because everyone's coming into their next season. Oscar's also coming into a fully healthy season after showing up and showing out last year. Faraby was a 21 point producer last year, now going to be a top six guy, and I think performed like one. So I think Patrick's going to be back early enough if he's not back right away. So with that, I think they'll be fine if it's going to have to be Lots as the third line to start if they put him in the center until Patrick comes back. Or ideally, if Morgan Frost can Frost, have, yeah. have a camp and then be their third line center and then maybe move to wing. So I think everything's going to fall into place for the Flyers. They do, if everything falls into place, have decent defense depth with um Hag and having guys like Friedman potentially on the bench if they do find a way to or put Moran or and um, Ghost in at the same time. So it depends what they do there. I just think our goaltending um, is going to be able to perform. Hart's going to be top five in the Vesna, and that'll help us get into the top seat as well. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I don't. Sorry, I, we got to finish up here, guys. I uh, got. We're going long. Um, I got Carter Hart probably possibly winning the Vesna. I also did not take Philadelphia to win this division, though. So you'll have to go see what I took. But I get it. Uh, you could see you, this is what I love about the division is you can make a case for several teams here. You can yeah. even make a case for the Rangers winning with the high talent that they have uh, and all of the uh, stuff. But uh, the if only that one that falls into place. Yeah, yeah there's just. <laughs> I like to go with who has the least amount of ifs, and you can go see that at my other prediction. We're going to be doing all the divisions, uh, which will be fun. This has been fantastic. Thank you guys for coming, taking your time out from the busy time we're having with uh, www.steelflyers.com, uh, all sports radio, or so our sports broadcasting. It is going to be fantastic over there, boys and girls. Keep watching. I will have, we'll be giving you updates. I'm going to be doing my little sneak peek here soon. You're going to, there's going to be lives and we have a whole bunch of people, some of them pretty big names coming in on our side of things. And you guys are going to be able to watch that. Thanks for coming in guys. We got to go because you know how we get talking. We could go all day. We can't do that here because people don't like it. (laughs) Have a great day. Lots of love to ya.